Hi, my name is Anis Naeem. I'm an art director and production designer working in both the film and games industries. I currently work at Riot Games as an art director and we'll be taking a look at how to make this. So let's get started. In chapter three, we'll be taking a quick look at texturing, lighting, and a rendering setup. So once we have everything set up uh, and your model's kind of in a good place and you're happy with it, it's time to texture. And I didn't do anything really complicated with this. I simply uh, made some very basic shaders. Uh, there's nothing fancy here. It's just one principal BSDF and I set it to, um, let's go to metal dark and copper. And it's very simple, uh, a, a bit of a Voronoi texture to get it some fl uh, flex, but it doesn't really show up anyway at the end of the day. So I could have just gotten away with the base color and some specular and metallic tint here. So you can see it's, it's really quite, quite basic and bare. Uh, but the main work that went into uh, play here is are the, the graphics that I put on. I did not UV any of this. I simply used the knife tool and cut out some pieces from a graphic board that I made. And I just uh, looked at some you know, space imagery from NASA to figure out and kind of copy the designs and uh, see where they put stickers and make it look a little bit more believable. So that was really where the main effort went into and uh, it really paid off. And then of course I set up parenting hierarchies which will quickly glaze over in the animation chapter. So let's jump right in. Great, so let's take this RZ or R control and put this off to the side here and turn off some overlays so we can see this. I basically, uh, if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled and uh, import images as planes in your preferences, you can simply just drag your image into the viewport here and it'll make a plane. I made it square so I don't have to worry about um, actually scaling it to the right ratio. You can see here I connected the alpha to alpha and the base color to base color and then there are options uh, and if you just if you don't have this open under shader editor so I'm in shader editor uh, you go to options here you click blend mode alpha clip and shadow mode alpha hashed and that should do the trick uh, you could also set it to alpha clip um, and then the most important thing is you need to go here and uh, go to your modifiers click add modifier and then click shrink wrap and then leave this you want to keep it red because you'll be shrink wrapping to the arm and the legs and the face so you don't want to uh, apply a target just yet and we'll just move this here and we'll take this and we'll go into face mode and just press K to begin getting let's just take this thing here actually let's start from this edge here 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 and then connect it right there and press space so press shift D and now uh, this is where the technical bit comes in you'll just simply control space put to new object great and control shift right click to put the center of the object right within the center of the new object here and I'm just going to name this decals master or just decals and then it'll just add its uh, other numbers past that. So now what you need to do is give it some right click and click subdivide and press D and there we go. We have some geometry. We could go a little further but you don't want to go too crazy because you know what well, and let's just wrap it around this. I'll try to make it a little bit difficult. So right around here. What you want to do is go here and make sure align rotation to target is active and uh, you know make sure vertex and face 
is selected for snapping and that should be it and then we'll just take this and press control and it should align to roughly where we want it to be right so let's just put it here and then press ZZ twice to kind of offset it a little bit and just go here and click this and whoops so it's got it's doing something and then from here you just want to offset it a tad bit and then just kind of slide it around until you get something that kind of looks not messed up and you may need more geometry to work with here there we go so uh, you could end up start and you know and if the more complicated the surface change it doesn't work perfectly but you can get it close enough you see it's starting to do it better there so um, for me it's like I, I find it easier you can see right here it works really well because it was relatively flat surface didn't have a lot of wrinkles uh, same here same here so I strategically chose places where I could put these and it's the same method over and over and over again and uh, I would just suggest you parent these to the object that you're attaching them to as you go along because otherwise just you know click this and click this and then you just press control P object so now if you move this object it moves with it otherwise if you later on down the line if you texture this way it can get really hectic really fast and then you have to really spend a lot of time figuring out where what attaches to where and you'll hate your life so that's for me the texturing bit really it's it's really quite simple i would say and here i just chose some everything was i just essentially you can see that if i zoom in it's a super simple uh metal material with some roughness and some specular and metallic you know all amped up and that really gives it a nice look and then um, you can go back out here and go to view cam and turn on enviro and if you go into rendered mode it looks quite believable I mean it didn't really take much I would say that I probably need to work on this um, the cloth material itself because it looks a little plasticky so let's go to cloth and I'd probably just simply reduce I think I tried to do a bunch of random things but it's so simple that I just need to get rid of all these things turn the specular down and turn the roughness up and there we go it looks a little bit more like cloth now just a tiny bit more spec and a bit more roughness right here and it's as simple as that in my opinion I was I in with these other things I was trying to create like a nylon material where it has you know on the edges a way like from the angle of your eye it has some sort of uh, fernel or clear coating but I realized that it was getting too complicated for this exercise so I did away with it but that's it let's uh, move into the rendering section here and I'm just going to pause and come back so I'll go over the lighting real quick if you go into rendered view you can see here that I have a glow of the earth set up essentially which is quite easy I created two cards or two area lights I should say and I set the power to 2000 because it worked for my scene and I left the specular on and that's really it and under shadow clip start bias I didn't really enable contact shadows and same thing here it wasn't really that necessary and I set the color to the same and it, it kind of wrapped it around and then I parented it parented them to the empty that contains my bot and it was really that simple and then I just inserted some additional area lights here to uh, I well what I did was I made an emission material on the actual geometry and then I put an area light on top of that to make it cast a sort of light emission on top and then after that, it's uh, it's just a sun material here, or a sun light, I should say, which is, you know, right here. And you can take that and rotate it 
any which way you like. Let's go into object mode. So let's go into front mode and create any composition you want at this point. So RZ, and I, sh I should mention that my sunlight, uh, I set it the strength to five and I set a yellowish color. You can of course set it to any color you like. Um, in the end, I think I stuck with a more white color because I didn't want it to feel too warm. Um, it's just in space, it, it just looks more white if you look at all the space photography. So let's take this. And the other thing uh, that I intentionally did, which is really quite key, is I created the sunlight and I placed it at an angle that you would not see it on Earth usually, which is beneath the character instead of above. It really helps made it, it made it look more like it was in space. And a lot of the space photography you can see, you know, there's just no vertical axis. The Earth is kind of your ground. So you're getting kind of lit from either the side or beneath you or above. It's just all over the place. So I intentionally chose the angle of the sun to be low and aiming up at the bot. And um, then all I did was, let's go into our Enviro here, Enviro collection. Um, there's this concept called, I'll just isolate these here. So... Uh, please ignore the stuff in the background. I should have been more organized, but we'll get into that in just a second. So hold off on that. Uh, I, in the final tutorial, I'm planning, or the final video, I'm planning on creating a quick space station to make this gobo effect. But if you're just making a still, you see, if you go into camera front, and you just need, you see, without that, you have this, Enviro. Uh, where's the where did it go there we go so with without with without um, I wanted to have some sort of I'm going to turn the sunlight off because there there are two suns in my scene here so I will just stick with one sun so you can see um, if I turn let's move this out to let's go to lights okay and there we go so now if I turn the enviro off you can see it looks kind of bland but with it you get additional shadows that wrap around our bot and the more it comes into the scene the more you know it has uh, shadows across its face and arms and it makes it a little bit more dynamic and that's really quite simple you can you simply only really need cards if you're never going to be looking in this direction, why build an entire space station when you can simply, you could even create um, an alpha on this and just paint the, the shadow you'd like to cast and then, you know, cast that shadow just with the mask and that would be quite efficient. But I just put in some cylinders and such here. I could duplicate this, go into view here and you can see if I just move it in the y-axis right there there we go so now that adds an additional one more layer as if there's something else that you know is blocking the path and nice there we go and then shift D R Z let's uh, R Y actually R Y so it's all about framing as well and that's why it's important to choose your shot and the angle so you can kind of design everything to that in my opinion um, it's not a one shoe fits all solution there we go so um, now I will just look at some of the rendering properties here so I enabled soft shadows. You can enable or disable them. Uh, I preferred the look of soft shadows, so I enabled them. It's kind of a cheat because uh, I, I think you just get you know harder shadows with sunlight out there in space. Um, but I'm trying to make go for sort of a visual uh, artistic license here. Then color uh, for the background, I just set it to this bluish color here. Uh, if you can look at these values, and then. 
uh, the strength itself, I, you know, this will be set to zero, which kind of makes the shadows too dark, in my opinion, for what I wanted. And after looking at some astronauts in space, it was Earth acts like quite a nice bounce light card um, from sunlight. So you get a really nice glow and fill uh, throughout your stuff if you're close to Earth, I should say, um, in, in orbit. So uh, this was, I found this to be a good value. And I did not use any volume. I experimented with it. But if you turn it on, you know, this is interesting. So maybe you're in an asteroid field, this would work. But EV has the issue, it, your lights become visible, you see, uh, your area lights. And so um, that's the only big issue for me. I wish there was a way to take those individually and kind of remove them from being impacted from the volume. Um, so you could do that and that looks nice, but uh, it uh, obviously, you know, it looks like you're in the atmosphere rather. So let's just take that down ambient occlusion these are my settings bloom this was a huge factor you have to push thresh pull threshold down and intensity all the way up to 0.1 for it to look quite nice without it again it looks a little bit bland and uh, depth of field so this is a big one let's go into our camera front here so let's find it and I'll just pull the settings up and I'll actually join this area down so there we go so depth of field you have to enable it in your camera as well as and and kind of uh, fiddle with it here so i have my max size i've set to you know 146 pixels here so enable it in your camera and um you may be wondering how i got this sort of uh you know wide look with the uh, sort of an anamorphic lens look and the way you do that, I mean, I'm cheating here. It's supposed to, the number is supposed to be two, but I kind of set it to five just to amplify the effect. But the ratio, you uh, you under aperture, so under depth of field, click aperture, open that up. And focus distance, obviously you can tell if you get rid of this, everything's out of focus and you can manually control it. But I'm just gonna control Z and you can just pick your object. And which one so I just chose a random uh, object in, on the mech so it stays constantly in focus and aperture of course f-stop you can pull down to increase the effect so I found 0.3 to be a good solution it also really helped me hide the blown out texture that I had in the background which uh, or I just up the texture quite a bit from the low res photo and paint it on top so you I didn't want to see a lot of the noise and stuff so 0.3 was good for me at least from this camera 0.5 might be nice um, blades I just left at 5 rotation 0 and that was it it was that simple those are really all the settings and past that I just kind of went into the animation phase and quickly animated